question was uh, aimed to provide some uh, quick overview of artificial intelligence and what are aspects of artificial intelligence applications in contact center. And then to make it more spicy, we also wanted to do something tangible, something uh, you can possibly use and, and do a deep dive into one of those areas. Um, um, just wonder how many of you visited the yesterday session from my boss, okay, just one person, okay. So uh, uh, this session was covering something quite interesting. It was covering, last year was talking about building a chatbot with uh, enterprise uh, email and chat, ECE component, a new API at that time. Uh, and uh, yesterday, uh, Paul showed us how we can actually use the same dialogue logic and same architecture to actually drive voice calls. So you basically uh, take out IVR and you drive your IVR with the, with the, with the chatbot, basically. And so uh, if you are, uh, you know, uh, interested in something like that, I highly recommend that you check the session. There is a ton of code. It, you know, it uh, uh, does show it how it, it is done with CVP and CCX. Uh, so it covers you all. Uh, it's quite interesting session. So uh, uh, we will be doing something else uh, in, in our session. And uh, when I was uh, looking, okay, what else is, 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 is going to be uh, interesting for, for contact center and typical intelligence? And across to my attention, uh, one, one of the conferences, and I saw uh, uh, a lady uh, named uh, Tracy uh, Gusher Thomas from uh, KPMG, and she said something very interesting, you know, that, that, that got me thinking uh, about topic modeling. And, you know, I wasn't really even familiar, okay, well, what the topic modeling? I saw, you know, we're doing something maybe with Google about that. And uh, but then she said, you know, that's probably the, you know, very first thing you should be doing if you're thinking to, to start using artificial intelligence in, in contact center. So um, in her words, you know, it's a foundation of all the art of possible you can do uh, in a, in a, when it comes to uh, uh, applying artificial intelligence in, in a contact center. So uh, we'll try to make that a theme of, 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 of today's presentation. And, and by the way, uh, yeah, we'll close it with, the, with, with it and so, uh, if some of you get bored or have some emergency to go away and, and walk away, at least I know that I passed this idea to you, you know, so you have this single slide, uh, just think about that and that's good. But uh, for, for those who want to see the rest, let's, uh, let's try to see it next time and, and uh, at the end. So <clears throat> the agenda for presentation is, is first to, to go over, uh, you know, overall things about artificial intelligence, talk a little bit about that. There's uh, lots of talks about artificial intelligence today, but uh, there may be some here and there, some confusion even, okay, about what is that. And, you know, we'll, uh, it looks like it's, it's getting quite serious. And so, so let's take a moment and go a little bit, you know, from, from end to end on, on, on some, uh, you know, overall, uh, you know, things about that. And, uh, then we'll talk about uh, possible use cases in uh, contact center, um, uh, what Cisco strategy is about, you know, applying uh, uh, artificial intelligence in, in, in contact center solutions. We also have a recent uh, uh, collaboration with Google. We'll, we'll touch on that and, and clarify a few points there. Um, and then uh, we'll do some, uh, I call it deep dive into, into topic model where we can uh, talk a little bit more about what is topic modeling and actually demonstrate how you can build a complete pipeline end-to-end -end, uh, independently if, if you are up to doing something like that. And we'll see some results that we are getting from some real data that we found out on the, uh, on the, on the internet. So, uh, uh, or you have difficult intelligence. So definitely this is, uh, multidisciplinary 
area. So it's not just a computer science. There's a quite a few uh, different uh, areas those are uh, touching uh, this, uh, uh, what we call artificial intelligence, starting from you know, philosophy, psychology, uh, cybernetics, uh, you name it. So uh, there are a few interesting things that what we are calling intelligence, uh, it's, uh, someone noticed very well. You know, once we solve some problems, we stop calling them intelligence. We start calling them methods, you know, best practices, solutions. But while something is not explainable completely, uh, then we call it intelligence, right? So uh, maybe that's philosophy, you know, and, uh, um, uh, but uh, in some way, what we're talking uh, uh, today is set to expire. Artificial intelligence is a moving target. The focus of an artificial intelligence is moving. Uh, once upon a time, the, the activation of this safety airbag in a car was considered artificial intelligence. No one talks about that anymore, right? That's, uh, uh, you know, figured out completely. That's not considered intelligence anymore. So some people say artificial intelligence is a set of unsolved problems or not completely solved problems. So, uh, which, is, which is sort of interesting thing about that. If you... If you are into artificial intelligence, you are in the uncharted territory, and uh, it assumes some research, some playing, uh, sooner or later. You know, you can run with some, some knowledge, with some uh, common stuff, common tools, but then you come at the, at the moment where you are by yourself, and you need to do some things and to discover. Uh, what is uh, quite interesting, you know, I mentioned psychology, it was, the, the, how powerful those tools are. And then yesterday I was watching news uh, about uh, Google and, and Apple fighting, uh, I don't know if you heard, but Google, uh, Apple, Google was to place application on, on Apple store. That was called uh, Facebook research app. And they were paying users $20 a month to use it. As uh, in return, uh, with that application, Facebook was collecting all data about movement, about use of the phone, and so on, so on. You know, so you trade your complete privacy for twenty dollar a month, and, uh, uh, and and Apple said, no, 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 you know, that's, that's breach of the privacy. And Facebook said, no, but we said up front, and people are accepting; they're getting money to use application. And so I, I think Apple is not concerned about. Uh, uh, privacy is actually concerned about the power of data that Facebook can collect. With that data, Facebook can basically probably collect uh, and figure out 20 million people just making decision, Samsung or Apple, Samsung or, and then will knock to the Apple's door, say, hey, you want to buy these 20 million contacts? Or let's see what Samsung says about that how much money they will offer, you know? So, so I think um, we'll see more and more these, uh, these uh, data wars, right? Um, and if I, if I can be a futurist a uh, little bit, you know, I don't know, this can, this can turn ugly. You can maybe be forced to choose whether I use Facebook or whether I use iPhone. You know, it's, uh, we'll see. But um, it's quite interesting, and, and this is something that MIT was doing a long time ago. In, in some African countries, they were able to sponsor mobile phones for entire populations. They were able to, uh, to collect all those data because they're giving uh, free phones to people. Uh, and and uh, you know, they come up with, uh, with, with tons of studies about you know, pattern behaviors, uh, behavior analytics, and so on and so on. So, so they run in parallel uh, quite a few of those. And in some, some areas, they were running, OK, how the people are using phones. And some other areas, they were running some other, like, OK, um, type of personality uh, you know, tests. And they figure out in some way that they have, there's a correlation. There's a correlation how you use mobile phone and what your personality type is. And guess what? You know, I know in the room we have, us, uh, we have some service providers here. Uh, you know, they, they hold the data who's a sociopath in, 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 a, in, in a society. They can read it from the way how, how phones are used. You know, we all leave digital signature as we live, you know, and that tells more about us. And if I can be a futurist even more, I think gaming industry has a fantastic potential one day to connect to medicine. 
because just let the people play for half an hour and you get all diagnosis out of them. You know, just, just by the way how, how they move, how they think, you can, you can, you can say what, what's wrong with that. You know? so, um, so yeah, quite, quite interesting, complex, um, uh, not to get stuck on that, but uh, uh, one of the now linguistics, of course, uh, that's uh, you know, top, topic modeling is part of that. But uh, how we officially you know, consider start of, uh, of, uh, of this is uh, uh, when in 1947, uh, Alan Turing uh, said, okay, we need machines that will learn from experience, right? He said that, you know, today we uh, see that uh, uh, deep mind uh, uh, with uh, enforced learning, reinforced learning, uh, uh, you know, they, they teach the, 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 the model how to run and to jump over and, and, and so on. There, there are quite a few things happen between this sort of uh, first announcement, what we need. And by the way, Alan Turing, I don't know if you, if you watched the uh, Beautiful Mind movie uh, about the guy who invented this uh, uh, machine that uh, I think actually, you know, uh, was was um, calculated that he saved like 14 million lives because he cut the hour, uh, cut the war for two years, and so on, so on. So there are lots of things that there, there is a Turing test established on, on artificial artificial intelligence, and uh, so he, uh, there is a thing that say, okay, if something can uh, uh, attempt Turing test, that is artificial intelligence. And there is also uh, there is Alan Turing's uh, uh, award. Uh, that is considered Nobel Prize in, 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 in computer science and, and uh, uh, Google is, uh, I think, today paying uh, one million which each, each uh, you know, nominee, each uh, awarded. Uh, so, yeah, but sad, sad story about him and, and his personal history, so. Uh, so, a little bit of, you know, run through this history after Alan Turing and his machine, there was a First I conference, 1956. Then there was this Elisa uh, around when, when I was born. Uh, uh, that was the first chatbot, basically, you know, developed in MIT. Uh, so, uh, but it was heavily scripted. It didn't really have, you know, true understanding. But it was able to attempt Turing intelligence test. So, and Turing test was okay. I have machine and I have human, so they interact and you don't know who's who, and independently you have to vote. This is machine, this is, this is, uh, this is a man. And if you cannot decide, and you know, the, the results are like that, that you cannot make a difference between machine and a man, then you, know, you pass the Turing test. That was the idea. That was the first application that was attempting Turing test, yeah, officially. Uh, then we had this uh, uh, Nobel Prize for uh, satisfying, uh, satisfy, uh, um, um, uh, what is the, <coughs> ah, I lost the word. So, um, uh, it, it, was, it was making decisions in, uh, in uncertain conditions and, and uh, uh, it, was, it was applying some artificial intelligence to economics and to how you run organizations. Uh, then, um, well, uh, 1993, uh, the guy, uh, uh, Venor Vinge, he uh, predicted that in 30 years, humankind would be able to uh, produce a superhuman intelligence. So guess what? That's 2023. It's five years from now. We'll see. And uh, we're not far away, actually, from, from getting there. And uh, he, he said, okay, I'm predicting this in 30 years, but what happened next, I cannot predict. Uh, because the changes in the human society after superintelligence comes to, to light will not be able to, to be predicted right now. Uh, Deep Blue, 1987, actually Deep Blue 2, uh, there were there were Deep Blue 1 that, that lost from Gary Kasparov the, the, the year before, and then they pushed more effort, more knowledge, and they won it, you know, that was a huge effort. Uh, and then the, the, the big hardware software engineering effort of 10 years of development, 10 years plus in IBM. Uh, when they were able to actually beat the world champion in chess, and you know that was that was I think some announcement, some some things where people were start thinking, oh, this artificial intelligence is a serious thing, you know. Uh, then there were a few other things worth mentioning. You know, uh, 2009, uh, Google was start secretly building uh, self-driving cars, and 
I think in 2012, on uh, May 1st, 2012, in Las Vegas, they passed the test. You know, they, they had official tests with, uh, with MDV in Nevada, and they got the license plate, you know, that, you know, the <laughs> and, and a, a, a license uh, permit, right, for the, for the software. Um, uh, so IBM Watson, uh, was that, that was a big thing also defeated. This uh, uh, Jeopardy was very, uh, you know, I don't know if you, if you know that uh, show, uh, you know, was a big thing, uh, you know, that there's a gazillion of questions uh, read in real time. Uh, 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 co co competitors, they're, they're reading those uh, questions, uh, you know, and machine was able to read, understand, and to play, and to simulate a uh, human person completely and actually to win. You know, after after some years, that that human were actually and two guys were actually world champions in in this knowledge. Uh, Watson, that that was named by by IBM uh, uh, founder, won. Right. Um, then DeepMind, uh, it's a it's a sister company of Google. Uh, they uh, actually did it the same for for Go, which was considered to be much more complicated game, uh, and then just by applying this reinforcement learning, meaning learning from experience, they made two machines play against each other and learn that way, they actually made it you know, almost 10 times better. So I don't know what's next. You know, we're waiting for aliens to come and say, hey, you wanna play Go against us? You know? uh, we'll see. So, uh, but uh, here's the thing, you know, th there was a huge history of that, but why we are just hearing about uh, artificial intelligence in the recent several years. You know, it was, it was something really happened, you know? Something really happened that, that, that things, one of a sudden, everyone was about that, right? And, um, well, you know, so I was looking, okay, well, what was that? And, and apparently, it comes down, uh, if you can, you know, find a guilty guy, uh, probably that would be this gentleman. Yeah? He was, uh, since 2017, uh, 70, the, the lonely wolf pushing for, for neural networks, neural networks. He was, no one was saying, okay, that's, you know, he was writing and researching and he was a professor in, in Toronto and, and one day his student, one of his students, um, Alex Skevsky, sorry, Alex for, he actually has Alex Net uh, 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 model by, by his name. He won this ImageNet content. Uh, context. Uh, um, that was a competition year after year when you get a bunch of pictures uh, and people come and they get the data set with new set of pictures and they have to recognize those pictures. They have to say, okay, that's a dog, that's a cat, that's a, you know, this kind of breed of dog or something like that. Every time it's a different, uh, different thing. And, and, and Alex showed up and he blew away everyone, you know, by, by miles, you know, and, 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 but the part of the competition is, yeah, you have to present your solution at the end, right? And then he actually presented deep network, deep learning uh, neural networks, something that was the theory of, of uh, Jeffrey Hinton for a long time, years, and he was his, his mentor. Uh, and then next year, everyone was uh, <laughs> coming up with this solution. That's why this deep neural network, which is in fact a very simple thing, and, and we will scroll through that, uh, made such a big impact to everything else because it turns upside down many, many existing knowledge. Uh, let, let's, let's say uh, IBM chess thing was not using deep neural networks, it was using search. Google's thing with Go use deep neural networks, right? So it's a, it's a tremendous difference that one of a sudden made it possible uh, for computer to see, to understand. Uh, I will see a little bit uh, um, how that might be, uh, uh, you know, clarified. So uh, it was also named as godfather of, of deep learning. Uh, Okay, so um, artificial intelligence. There is a there is a book. Uh, it's called, considered Bible, but you know, uh, I don't know. It's 2016. Uh, I was a third edition. I don't know if you know there may be things that are missing already in the book. Uh, 
but anyway, uh, uh, Peter Norrig uh, uh, and uh, Stuart Russell, uh, they were, you know, two guys were sort of making this area, uh, uh, you know, academic. And Peter Norrig, uh, together with Sebastian, Tur uh, uh, Sebastian Turn, uh, at some point they decided, okay, let's make uh, now online training for this. Uh, and they say, okay, let's you know take this book, uh, make it a little bit uh, you know digestible, uh, you know, so that people who are not in artificial intelligence they can go to down online training. And they say, okay, well, what do you think? How many people will, will get? You know, they will say, okay, maybe 500. And you know, so I was optimistic and say, okay, I want I want uh, maybe 2,000. Uh, you know, so um, we'll, we'll get them. You know, after two weeks, basically, they got 58,000 subscribers. So that they decided, you know what, we need to make a company. That's what they did. They made a, uh, they made Udacity uh, company, and and you know they are, uh, uh, they're now offering those trainings. I was one of those who went through Udacity Artificial Intelligence. So I, if anyone else is here, I'd like to chat with you. If not, and you're looking to you know uh, grow in that area, I would highly recommend you know to uh, to check Udacity.com and and see, uh, you know, uh, their trainings, uh, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, so, in essence, artificial intelligence, you know, by this book, you know, this is the content, right? So, so there are several things. We see that machine learning is part of artificial intelligence, right? Uh, and a particular part of artificial intelligence is communicating, perceiving, and acting, where we have all those things that, that we are mostly interested in for contact centers, right? Natural language processing, speech recognition, um, to some extent, uh, computer vision. So that's, uh, that's one Bible of this, and the other one is about deep learning. Uh, um, uh, young get, uh, good fellow, uh, uh, and, and I just putting it here so that, okay, let's say we, we measure deep learning, what is that? So, so basically there's a, now four components in, 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 in deep learning, you know, the, it's a neural networks, there is a, these convolutional neural networks, there's some recursive. We'll touch on each of those um, so that we get the understanding what, what brought this revolution. Uh, and there's also a bunch of uh, acronyms uh, uh, usually linked with those. For example, uh, DNN is a, a deep neural network, right? Then convolutional, it's a CNN convolutional. Uh, RNN uh, recurrent. Uh, and uh, the, other, the last one is called GAN. Uh, it's a, it's a generative um, uh, adversarial networks and, you know, use uh, for generating things. Actually, those are particularly uh, <laughs> dangerous topics. I was yesterday, again, watch another news about uh, these uh, fake, uh, fake movies, you know, when they are able to uh, take a politician and make it looked like he said something he didn't, for example, completely um, in a way that you cannot, you cannot know that it's not who he is and what he's taking. You know, th those, those generative networks are now used to actually generate content. There's a people actually they're making a, a, a new music uh, out of it. You know, they, they, they made, uh, they made uh, uh, models that learned Bach and Beethoven and now they're making new, you know, symphonies. <laughs> uh, you know, so even we lost, you know, Beethoven and Bach at some point, you know, now computers can keep generating, you know, and eventually, and you know, it sounds interesting. Uh, but uh, let's, let's uh, stick to the basis, uh, you know. Um, and, and first of all, you know, just, just wanted to, uh, you know, clarify, I saw a few times, uh, uh, you know, some, some little mess, okay, People think, okay, machine learning is separate, uh, artificial intelligence is separate. No, uh, deep learning is is the new generation of machine learning, and it revolutionized many artificial intelligence areas, uh, made new applications, and uh, especially have an impact to uh, uh, natural language processing. So, so this is sort of like, uh, uh, you know, how how all those things are tied together uh, today. So what is uh, neural network, you know, what it does in essence, right? So, so it's a simple problem, okay, there's a lots of other things, but, you know, consider we just want to see, okay, 
how we'll explain it to, you know, the little one. You know, it does classification, right? So we have two things, and we have to, okay, how I distinguish between those two things? And, and basically, we have to draw the line, right? Between, say, hey, there's apples, there's oranges. Okay, and more data I put in, more complicated it gets, right? So I now put more of those, okay, so it doesn't work anymore, this model. I have to adjust, you know, so, so that we now have a line that would, you know, classify. More data we put in, more precise model we can get. So, so, so that's, a, that's the first thing that we need to know, right? So if, you, if you're building model that, you know, will have to apply some machine learning, it depends on how much data we have. You have to have enough data. If you have very, few, very little data, you know, you're not gonna get much, right? But uh, the whole point is basically is, you know, helping to draw the best line that can classify one thing from another, right? So, so that is classification thing, and yes, it, it, you know, uh, this line, you know, uh, we'll see in the next one how it's implemented, basically. Let's say we have now a uh, coordinate system where we put this, we'll have two, uh, two coordinates, we somehow uh, have to do something with that so that we decide whether something is F or not, right? But uh, neural networks, they don't calculate. They just made it possible for this to be learned. You know, this, uh, uh, sorry, I don't know if I have, uh, it's, this number two here, this number one here, and this number two here are learned numbers. They're not calculated. This line was moved left, right, left, right, and, and all the time was error was calculated. Okay, how much, how much error I, I have? Okay, I have some oranges that I classify as apple, I have some apple classified as oranges. Okay, let's put that in the equation. Okay, my error is this big. I have to make it lower. Okay, let's move to the areas where the, this error will be lower, right? So uh, the Udacity guys explain it with uh, with uh, analogy with, with uh, mount error rest, right? Like you're standing on the top of the mount of error and you're just climbing down to try to make this error less and less, you know? And the trouble is if you come into valley, you need to know how to jump out to valley. But it's all about, you know, finding the minimum error, right? So in, in the neural network have on, on this level, how it does, you know, you start from some random, goes back and see, am I getting a good result? No. Let's go back, let's go back. And you know, uh, computer power is there. You know, you can just calculate why, why NVIDIA stock is so, so, uh, <laughs> so grow after, you know, in, in the recent years because of this calculation, right? Not just because of Bitcoin. Uh, so, so that is basically what it does. You know, it, it's, it's enable, uh, sorry, uh, it enable uh, uh, those cells to, to learn result, not to calculate. And where's this uh, uh, neural came from, right? If you have these variables and we put them into one cell and we, we are looking for results, it resembles to, uh, to neuron, right? That's why it's called neural, right? We have uh, dendrites, sort of, we have uh, you know, nucleus, we have axons, so, so this is analogy with the, uh, uh, with the with biology thing, right? So yes, and, and, and everything, okay, sounds good, we have few apples, uh, we, we put the line between, but world is never, uh, you know, linear, right? World can be uh, much, much more complex, right? So sometimes we have, uh, you know, something like this, how I can draw a line that can split apples and oranges here, right? So, uh, well, this, we, this become why we, why we call this network. Of course, important thing, whatever we have in the world, we first need to make numbers out of it. The first step in, 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 in this is I need to make a number model of it, right? So in this case, I will just make coordinate system and, and a point that some will tell me, hey, this is, this is something I'm interested in, whether it's apple or orange. So why this, uh, where this network name came from? So if you, if you say, okay, we have these uh, coordinates and now, uh, we now we try to do some calculation. Okay, on the part I can draw the line that selects some apples, right? On the other part I can, you know, do on some other side. And then on the third part, you know, I can, that way, you know, I sort of, for, for many attempts, I now uh, de decoupled the, the, you know, the, the bigger problem to solve it, you know, with multiple things. So this way, 
if I, you know, I can stack as many as, I can stack a thousand of those cells, you know, meaning I can guess any sort of, and, and not just in one step, I can go step after step after step. So it costs me nothing, you know. It's a, um, um, this calculation is, is basically, you know, something that, that's done. Uh, we just need to provide a shape how we want this to be calculated. So where this deep came from, it came from that, that basically we can have these layers of cells, as many as we want. So it's, uh, we just stack them, you know, as we need them. We just put one after another, after another, after another, depending on the complexity problem we're solving, depending on the, much of, or the type of data we have, the, the, depending on the type of results we're going to get, you know, we create this model, right? We somehow put this together and, you know, just let it learn. And that's this learning is, you know, and then, so, so we, we, we sort of put this model in, supply the data in numerical form, and then it goes, you know, many, many times up and forth, and we see, okay, this is supervised learning, but we know what results we need to get. We know that for certain uh, combination of, of, of points, we need to get the blue color, for certain other, we get the yellow one, but every time we go, we will get the model, finally learn how to do it, right? So we put some completely new input at the beginning, we get result, right? I don't know, another futuristic uh, thinking, maybe this model will replace database. You know, they're, they're quite smaller, quite compact, quite fast. Sometimes you go to database, you get the result, right? The same thing happened with the model, but what they learned, learned the logic, you know? So who knows, we'll see. Huh? Uh, so neural network may have large number of layers, that's why, you know, we call them neural. And uh, we have input, right, which is important thing that we specify and, and, and probably one of the most, uh, you know, points where the people are making errors. Uh, then we have these hidden layers that we just configure. We do nothing about them. And we specify what kind of results we get. So basically those three things is what we call model, right? The model needs to include definition of those three things. And then we have a model. So model at this moment is a concept. You know, it's a concept or could be a 10 lines of uh, Python code. Uh, and it's a concept, but then we'll see how the model evolves into something else. Uh, before we uh, move to, to other things, I want to also, I, I mentioned, you know, neural networks, then we were talking about convolutional uh, neural networks. So basically, what if my data, uh, data is not just a, you know, bench of, is not a vector of numbers, right? Why, why if I have a picture where I have, you know, important structure and, and relationship, right? We, we can, so convolutional uh, networks and uh, uh, were basically uh, those that, you know, I take a picture and then I just take a smaller part of a picture and do some calculation on a smaller part. Then I move, move that calculation to the next part, small part of the picture. Again, do some calculation, do some calculation. You know, those are sometimes just a zero one, you know, calculations, very efficient, very fast operation, so-called activation functions. The, whether I activate something or not, those are zero ones, basically. I can repeat that many times, you know. Um, I can, you know, do some other functions, do some other functions. And basically, at the end, I'll conclude with 99%, with, with oh, this is number seven. You know, I'm, I'm quite, you know, if this is a handwriting and some sort of uh, recognition of, uh, what, what are those filters basically that uh, uh, we, we get? Basically in all those operations, we are looking for particular feature. And uh, here it's important, uh, you know, my slide uh, drives me in a different direction uh, to understand uh, this uh, uh, dimensionality reduction. Here we have a five by five, but then we make it simpler, three by three, but make it lots of those, right? So sometimes you make it smaller, but then you repeat it too many times. That way you're extracting an information out of it. And then at the end, it's one of 10 digits, right? So it's a classification problem. So say, 
give me what is one of those 10 results. So, so this is my uh, basically dimensionality of my, of my model here. And uh, now, I don't know if you noticed, uh, sorry. Uh, here we have a, you know, okay, change. This, this pattern was, was, was hunting for, for some, let's say, right edge. This one was hunting for some top edge. You know, this one was for some left edge. So those patterns are learned uh, through, through this process. Or I can get them imported and say, okay, you know, I know what the standard patterns are for some problem. Let me learn them. Let me put them in the process. Uh, and based on those patterns, you know, I, 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 I get those numbers and finally the math tells me, you know, this is number seven. Uh, if you have a four minutes of time, I highly recommend to watch uh, this, uh, this video. You know, it will tell with much, much more description, basically all this story. You will get to understand how computers see fully. You know, just invest four minutes of your of your time, please. Uh, but what we do with, uh, with this video, it's, it's not just okay, so now I see, I can recognize it's, it's, a, it's a man, it's a dog, it's a cat or something like that. There's actually very, very practical use of that. There's another example that you can all try and uh, you can get uh, 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 40 points on, on a people's face those are recognized by the software, and depending on how those points are related to each other, it does correlation with emotion. So you can read emotional expression out of seeing the picture easily like that. You get the metadata, it's real time, you can use it. So for example, if you have a video communication, video customers and for some reason, yeah, maybe you would like to know more what's going on over there. They don't even have to see this. You can run it in the background, collect metadata. You will learn, okay, what kind of emotions showed up during this conversation and read it from this. So uh, check it out, please. So, and uh, to mention your recurrent neural networks, okay, uh, are another type of networks where the data input sequence is important. For example, you know, we have a sentence that we have to translate, right? So it's important, you know, the, 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 the order of the words that's coming. So we need to have a network that can accept these sequences. It's basically each of those uh, nodes uh, will accept one word. So for example, if I'm making a translation software, first thing I have to say, okay, um, how big a sentences are that I'm translating? I say, okay, if I take 15, 15 sentences, you know, 15 word sentences, okay. So, so I made 15 nodes, right? And then I put uh, all kind of sentences into that model, make it learn, and get some output over there. But it's, uh, uh, it is a sequence and it's important, you know, how it's built. The sequence is built, it's all about parameters. This number one here represent, uh, you know, those, those things that will be learned through the process. Whether it's important that some words is be, uh, uh, before the other or not will actually be calculated in in this in this uh, 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 these numbers, right? So how much history I have to pull? How much is important that uh, you know before jump? Uh, I I need to know three three words before the system will be able to learn because you know it will it will go back and forth, back and forth. We'll see okay, these good results are happening when I have these numbers in these places, right? So this is uh, without, you know, uh, too much uh, going down into, into, into theory. There's a, there's a one, you know, very nice example of where these networks are, are playing a role in, in uh, uh, analyzing stock data, right? So, okay, so it's uh, actually a very simple algorithm that would uh, take you to, to read, for example, certain uh, stock and to try to predict what's happened. Next, if, if that prediction is actually contained in the previous uh, stock and, and uh, everyone will be just a, a billionaire, right? If this was true or, or, or not, right? But uh, the thing is that what, what, uh, what people are trying to connect, okay, if there's a move of this stock, uh, what was the previous move of maybe some other stocks? If Cisco stocks jump like this, did Microsoft follow 
three minutes later, so it's like this, right? So uh, those, those are applications where, where people are uh, figuring out and making money and then watching for certain things happening with some stocks and applying this to, to trades against the other stocks. So uh, uh, also voice. You know, voice is sequential as well. You know, the, the analysis of voice is, is, a, is a recurrent network. Uh, so how are we doing? So basically designing the model, uh, you need to know what's your input, and then we'll just simplify it here. We just have one, one hidden layer here. Uh, and I need to specify my, my, what my output is. So this is a, some concept, something I have on a napkin on, or, or, or you know, put a few lines of, of code in, in Python, and you know, I'm looking to that and say, okay, now I have my model here, so now I'm going to uh, train this model, right? So um, th there's a library that do that for you. There's nothing basically involving you to program. You just take a library and say, hey, train this model. Here's a model, train it, you know? Uh, you just need to supply uh, a bunch of data, right? So where you find data, whenever you have data, right? So uh, could be uh, analytics, could be recordings, could be uh, shopping charts, um, Wi-Fi uh, analytics if you collect them, if you know uh, what's going on over there, customer feedback. Um, yeah, that was it. Uh, pictures, uh, weather information, you know, I don't know if anyone is picking up weather information correlating with situation in, in the contact centers, but sooner or later, I think uh, men will figure out that, uh, you know, the, the call volume probably depends a lot uh, in some areas of, from, from the weather, whether people are stuck at, at home in the rain and they, they pick up and finally call, you know, to, uh, to do something. Uh, so uh, location information, email, uh, which is an example that we are going to do, chat, and, and so on. So, so we, once we collect all this data, we have to split it, right? We have to split it into what I'm actually going to use for training and some testing and some validating, right? So, so basically, you know, depending on the, on the strategy you have, maybe you can combine this testing and training and then you just move this sliding window around. So first test with some data, uh, then replace this test data used for training and so on and so on. But you need to keep this validation data out. You never have to, you never, you, you, should, you should have this data that your model never sees this data. Before the moment, now it's a moment of truth. I wanna see how my model works. Let me see on this unseen data how it will behave. So typical problem in, the, in developing those models is overfitting, right? So that's mean I'm trained, I train I lots of data, I put too much data, and model actually gets very good because testing results on training, they give very good results on, on this data that I'm training, and I'm, I'm very good. I'm getting 90 plus percent, but when I put some other data, I had 60%. That, that's overfitting, right? So, 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 so that's, that's something to keep in mind, right? So that uh, maybe the data are trainable to a certain extent. You can only squeeze as much information as you possibly can. If you try to squeeze more, you're not gonna get it, right? So, uh, and so once trained, model what becomes? It's just a file with numbers. You know, so, so no more need for any heavy hardware, um, GPUs, uh, you know, big time on, on, on to this, this training of these models could take any, anywhere from, from few seconds to, to, to few days or few months, depending on what you're training, right? So this is a huge, uh, you know, effort. But once you train, this model is just a file. And uh, no matter how big file is today, small and it can fit anywhere, right? It can fit either your desktop or your mobile phone or any equipment or, or it can be on the cloud, easily consumable, right? Uh, and you know, this is how it works. You develop model, then you utilize the model, right? Uh, so 
And, you know, where to start with all this deep learning? What's okay, now I'm, I'm interested, okay, that sounds good, so what, what should I do, where I go? There is this uh, uh, open source uh, library um, donated by uh, friends from Google. Uh, it's called Keras, and you probably heard about some other tools like TensorFlow, PyTorch, some other like more professional tools. Uh, and they're all good, right? But they're all actually uh, the layer below this Keras. Keras gives you a level of abstraction, easy entry point, easy understanding of how to build. And then they will actually change things down to use maybe TensorFlow or some other engine that will do the actual calculation that is much, much more complex, I would say, to learn from some of the starts. If you, if you read, you know, just, just know how to spell Python, go here, you're, you're able in, in afternoon to build a little neural network that can learn something, you know? So it's not, uh, and, 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 uh, and it's actually growing in popularity and it's more and more adopted. So uh, that's a URL uh, where you can find it. Uh, so what are possible use cases in contact center and customer care, right? Uh, of, you know, all these great technologies. So we first think about, okay, um, uh, speech recognition, text-to-speech, we saw the, the session yesterday. Um, you know, this is uh, all about uh, natural language processing. But, you know, artificial intelligence also offer, um, uh, offers some other areas where, where these, uh, th those are applicable. Uh, knowledge, reasoning, and questions answering, you know, apply to chatbots. Uh, recommender system, also we see uh, many, many partners are now offering recommender systems for customer journeys. Uh, computer vision, uh, uh, even game playing uh, can, can, can come. But okay, that's from the menu of artificial intelligence, here's what could be used. But you know, we're not thinking that way. Okay, here's what artificial intelligence can use, what you want, you know. It actually starts from the, what is, you know, driven by business, right? So, and every business to survive today, we must grow, you know. So first thing that everyone's looking is cost reduction. Uh, they want to make you know, simple operations the, to, uh, uh, to, to make an agile, uh, agile business and you know, to predict what's going on, right? So, so this is the goal of every organization. You know? So uh, more or less, you know, uh, pretty much, uh, if, he, if he can answer some of those things, then artificial intelligence become a you know, topic that they want to talk about. And uh, what customers are actually expecting from contact centers today, it's, it's also important to understand. They don't want to wait. Uh, you know, somehow they, they become impatient. Uh, one company offered them 24 hour service. Now they expect every company will offer them 24 hour service, right? So uh, they used to be uh, uh, okay to hell, wait uh, 30 minutes uh, on the phone to, to uh, talk to their mobile operator, today they will leave it in a split of a second if they, you know, if they would force to do anything similar to that, right? Um, they expect also this personalization to be there. So, you know, uh, uh, they want company to know about them enough to support them, not to explain their situation uh, every time. Uh, and they want convenience, right? They don't want to do redundant stuff if I already did something while I do again. Uh, so those are, you know, major points that customer uh, expect today in the contact center. Um, so there are some uh, uh, interesting, uh, you know, statistics, you know, that 90% uh, uh, of consumers will always check website before going to a company now, so, so, so now, whether it's applicable over all industries and so on and so on, but it's a, uh, it's a significant number anyway. So, so, so companies beside the contact center have to pay a huge attention to what's going on on the website. It becomes part of a contact center, no doubt. It cannot be uh, uh, looked as a separate thing anymore. Uh, uh, then 52% uh, uh, of consumers will look as multiple, three to four channels, right? So we need to 
be able to communicate to three to four channels seamlessly, you know, to, 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 to move transactions between those. And even 79% consumers, if they are not happy, they will tell about it, you know? So, um, so um, in, in, you know, in today's world, we have to do the, you know, uh, supreme service, you know, there is, and it just needs to grow, you know, it cannot satisfy and say, I have this level of service, that's okay. Uh, we have to move. So, so we, we look in the ways how artificial intelligence can actually uh, help with that. So uh, McKinsey was a source of that. Yes, there's a more McKinsey data. It's an unpopular topic about, okay, would artificial intelligence remove jobs and, uh, you know, out of industry? What's happened with my job? And what's going to happen with, uh, you know, uh, contact center jobs? So if you look, uh, from uh, from an, one analysis, what jobs would be uh, easy to be replaced with robots? Robots, uh, is, you know, whether it's a predictable physical work, it's a data processing or data collection. So if your agents are doing like something like this, most likely uh, there is a good opportunity for those things to be replaced with some automotion. On the other side, if uh, when when the uh, executives were asked, okay, what, what do you expect to happen with your workforce? They expect, you know, almost 90%, 94% of them think that they would need to hire new or retrain existing agents. So there will be, I, I cannot say that the, the, the computers will take over jobs of agents, but there will be a big shift in what agents are doing today and what they are doing in the future. So this transition, uh, will happen. Um, so uh, what about contact center management, right? So uh, there was also in the same study uh, from uh, McKinsey, they were, uh, were asked, okay, what, is, what are your top priorities, right? Um, and, and the top priority, uh, you know, and we heard Vasily that <laughs> this keep recurring uh, from, from analysts, they always say, hey, uh, the voice calls will, uh, will, will disappear, will disappear, but they, you know, they keep coming, you know, the, uh, something is uh, wrong with analysts, I guess, but, uh, but probably uh, uh, that all those channels are growing, but there's a mixture that is changing, right? So, uh, but two things are most important for management to do, right? So it's first to understand the value and complexity of, of those interactions and, and it, artificial intelligence can help with that. And then they need to choose the right level of the motion that needs to be applied. These two things will separate those who are successful from those who are not. So if you <coughs> succeed in those two things, you will be good. But those two things will not be easy, right? So, uh, if you look uh, for use cases in a, in a contact center, okay, we can maybe separate them. Okay, uh, before agent is engaged, after agent is engaged. Uh, so uh, before agent is engaged, we have this uh, all kind of IoT location analytics that could be applied uh, before interaction uh, actually comes to contact center. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, fraud detection, uh, more and more, uh, you know, uh, becoming. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence quite quite uh, uh, powerful in helping uh, in those areas. Uh, of course, virtual assistance uh, for for uh, uh, chat, voice, and video. Right? Uh, customer journey analytics. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a whole whole new uh, ecosystem of of offers uh, happening over there. Behavioral analytics. Uh, 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 we, we, we talked a little bit uh, at the beginning. I don't know if you have heard about company Affinity. Uh, Affinities are, are, are they actually, uh, the, they claim that they are able to recognize pattern behavior of agent and a customer somehow through the, through the time, through some interactions. And they, they able to match personality type of an agent and of the customer. So they, they always sort of find the buddy-buddy matching of the agent customer and therefore expecting much better uh, interaction to happen. Um, uh, and apparently they, they have some, some good results with that. Um, routing based on, on, on uh, topic models, something that we will have in a little uh, uh, showcase project as we move. 
Uh, after agent is engaged, there's also uh, things that could be done, answering support, uh, live customer journey recommendations. Uh, we see that, uh, you know, uh, some of that, if you uh, visited the uh, Cisco demo booth, uh, uh, visual assistance, uh, emotion detection, uh, knowledge capturing, knowledge base and real time matching. Uh, so those are all things that can happen once agent has interaction and could be empowered to do a better job. Uh, there are also things that uh, could be done in, in, in sort of planning of the contact center operations. You know, it's a, one thing uh, could be also topic modeling analytics. Um, and uh, new generations of workforce management systems that, you know, were based on some maybe older uh, statistical methods. Now they have a whole new weapon actually to, to give much better predictions of what's going on. And uh, here, uh, uh, I was thinking with the, with the colleagues, we were, we were, we were discussing maybe uh, utilizing machine learning to provide expected wait time in a queue. Uh, using this technology uh, instead of doing some statistical calculations and things like that. So there's a, there's a ton of these uh, areas basically where, where, where artificial intelligence can, can, uh, can make a significant difference. So what's the Cisco strategy here? So, uh, uh, you know, for, for several years already we're talking about these three C's, right? So, uh, you know, first of all, we're expecting this to be capable, right? Uh, so that, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's integrated, open, you know, and also we, uh, we are open to integration with best of breed uh, providers in that area. Uh, contextual, you know, so that we uh, have uh, uh, embedded architecture so that we can, you know, capture the context and also, um, you know, provide the routing, uh, reporting and agent experience based on, on that context. And, uh, of course, continue so that if something starts in, in, in automated system can be uh, and, uh, transferred to an agent. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know about this, how many times you've seen this slide on this uh, event, but uh, uh, how we see in a, in, in a short evolution of, of customer care, that all data basically that are happening on all different channels now have to be looked together, right? So there is a, this pipeline of all data that needs to be there. and. Uh, once we put, you know, all these data together in a, in the same place where we can combine them and, and learn from this data, we will be able to provide uh, a better reactive uh, functionality, right? So, so we will be able to react on what's going on uh, based on the data. And this is most likely, uh, so most of all, this is something that's already happening, right? But uh, when we learn more from all these data and we, we capture, we get to the point that we can now capture also context. So if we have enough data, we can, we can learn from context. And then once we learn more from context, we can also start to see what we can suggest in certain situations. And once we see that that working, you know, we'll, we'll get to that, that we can also predict what's going on. So this is, this is a journey that will, this will eventually for some customer will may take years, uh, you know, uh, but we will enable this by making the pipeline of data, making all data in one place, making services around this data uh, with our customer journey uh, uh, solutions and uh, basically, sorry. Uh, this will be so, this data service, right, one, that we have and uh, you know those points are symbolizing other services that will be around that some of those services would uh, uh, work with the uh, you know third party data sources some of those services will capture data and then make them available for uh, for future use some of those services will provide certain you know insights automotion agent assistance and so on and so on so that's you know in a, in a, in a nutshell uh, uh, you know big picture uh, how Cisco uh, is, is going to, uh, you know, uh, integrate uh, uh, and provide artificial intelligence. But uh, more, uh, more actually tangible example was on the poll sessions that I guess only one person here was there uh, yesterday and uh, was, was choice of services basically. We have a platform that's open 
And yeah, there are services up there available. And yes, we pick what services we need and we integrate with those services and make those solution, solutions work. We don't need to invest heavily into building our own intelligence. Maybe we can use it. Maybe uh, there are different strategies to develop here. But uh, uh, this is how we are looking to, to enable it, right? So being open, be uh, able to integrate with, uh, with big vendors. And one of those vendors that we actually work, work pretty close is Google now. Uh, so Google, they launched this uh, cloud, Google Cloud. It, uh, uh, and within that, they have a few things. Uh, they have this platform, then they have this uh, auto ML and, and APIs, and they have solutions, right? So those are three big parts of the, of the Google Cloud. Within solutions, they provide a set of APIs they call contact center APIs. Um, and there, there's a two, you know, contact center API and topic modeling API. So once when they uh, announced this alpha program, they invited all vendors. There was a big rush. Who's going to be, you know, the first to, to work with Google now? Pretty much all uh, relevant vendors are there and partnering with Google. Uh, you see Google touring around, uh, you know, uh, Europe and, and, and the world with the, with the venture partner events uh, showing up together with, the, with the, including Cisco people, talking contact center, Google. For them, it's, I guess, uh, very important, important market. They, they have struggled to penetrate enterprise anyway. So, so this is one of the entry points for them. Uh, and there are some very good things there, right? Uh, so we'll see very, very powerful things. And you know, I, if you saw the demos on, 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 on Cisco Boot, part of these contact center APIs were shown there. Uh, topic modeling from Google was sort of limited because my initial idea was to do something with that for this event and to uh, you know, see how that will work. But it's actually, um, it's unfinished. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, only half of the functionality. Basically, you, you can train a model and read the model uh, to see what's in there, but you cannot use it real time. So uh, in our case, we had idea to do something more tangible. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll get to that. So, so basically, we will do with Google three things. Uh, we will do virtual agents integration. Uh, with Dialogflow, we will do uh, agent assistance or, or Google answers, uh, whatever you uh, call this functionality. And uh, we're also planning to do this conversational topic modeling uh, at some point. So, so this is, uh, I would say, more like a roadmap items. We have them in the demo. We don't have them yet fully documented, published, and so on and so on. I hope you understand you will not be able to call Cisco TAC and complain that, you know, about some, some of those things. So it is between two companies. So it's not going to be a, a fully Cisco supported solution. It's more, it will be more like a certified integration uh, sort of thing. Uh, but uh, if you look uh, on, a, on, a, on a little bit closer on, on the picture, uh, what's in there, uh, the red stuff is, is things that Google is doing. You know, they have this contact center interface that they build. Uh, they have a virtual agent component. They have this agent assist, which is an escalation uh, thing. The dialogue flow is basically here, right? And contact center API is basically including this as well. So, so just so you understand. Uh, uh, there are three interface points, those green things, you know, so, so we can supply either chat or or phone data or, or, or media files uh, to Google. Uh, we can uh, connect a, a, a desktop, right, for this uh, agent assistance. And there is another one that uh, we are not uh, exploring yet, but this is for, for uh, third party data integrations, you know. Uh, so those are three interfaces Google is opening, things that they are doing, so clear demarcation line. Uh, and yeah, it's working. So I think you were able to see some of those in a, in, a, in demo booth. Uh, when it comes to uh, topic modeling, basically uh, they will accept uh, uh, chat logs uh, and 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 phone logs, you know, in a certain format. You supply this to them. They'll do it offline production of that model, and that come up with 
topics and will say, okay, those are conversations going on, this is keywords and those are top sentences happening. And you have that in a, some sort of form of report. You can access this data, analyze it, learn it from it and so on and so on. And basically there are other things that you can do, you know, uh, eventually use that for intent modeling when, you, when you're building dialog flow uh, interaction and so on and so on. Uh, but that's, uh, that was not enough for, for what we wanted to do. So, uh, so basically we wanted to, you know, uh, do something uh, that perhaps you can use today and perhaps you can uh, build or, or, or have your partners build uh, and, and, and uh, leverage uh, in, in some, some different scenarios. Uh, so when we talk about Topic modeling is clearly, go ahead. Correct. I have no idea. I, you know, I'm not receiving, you know, any feedback. This is, uh, there may be some fairly early adopters on that. So maybe few customers are testing it. So it's not even, you know, publicly available. Uh, so this is, this is a developing story. So I have no, sorry, I don't, I don't have, you know, tangible feedback on that. But we can keep in touch. Uh, we can keep in touch on, 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 on those things. And there is a, there is a spark room after this session. We can, uh, we can keep, uh, you know, communicating, and I'll, I'll share what I what I collect. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, topic modeling is basically part of natural language processing, and uh, you know, it's a uh, language. You know, we, we all know it's it's important. You know, medium for communication is the way how we communicate to other people. Is the way how we uh, express ourselves. Is the is the way how we give instructions. Um, and you know, some, some think it's, it's, it's a key component of human intelligence, right? Uh, so this is a sub uh, area of, of uh, artificial intelligence uh, on uh, uh, also computer science, uh, information uh, engineering uh, uh, that, uh, that is uh, working with uh, uh, human languages and analysis and how actually languages, human languages could be applied to talk to machines. And, uh, the, the, the main problem uh, with, the, with the human languages being used in, in talking to machines is in the structure. Basically, uh, machines are built to understand structural languages, like what's a structural language? Math, software, script, programming. Machine can go sequence by sequence, command by command, right? A people, uh, uh, human language, it could be structured. You know, it, it can have, a, you know, grammar rules but in most part, it's not, it's open. You know, we, we, uh, we kind of welcome uh, when we say something that, you know, uh, with ambiguity and, uh, and, and, you know, there's a context that we assume that, that someone would know. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, it, it's difficult for machines to, to understand, you know, and this is where the complexity of, of NLP uh, comes to play. So, uh, so what computers can do, right? So, so they, can, they can take words, they can take sentences, they can understand what's a name entity in the app, they can understand, okay, this is a date, okay, this is a quantity of something. Uh, they can do parsing, they can do uh, analyzing documents, they can maybe even extract some, some tone of sentiment out of a document. Uh, they can do other things and when they combine, they, they can come up with something very powerful. But in order to uh, really reach understanding, the, 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 there, there should be something more, right? There should be uh, context, right? Because we can, if you look, uh, you know, the, 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 the first sentence, you know, uh, what is this uh, uh, it, uh, you know, comparing to, right? The sofa didn't fit through because uh, the door because it was too narrow and then it was too wide. So we have that in one case, 
you know, we're thinking about door. In the other case, we're thinking about sofa. So there is a context there that, you know, you cannot extract out of the sentence. A computer cannot just learn the sentence. He needs to know the context, right? However, um, um, uh, deep learning actually is helping a lot, uh, you know, to, to get to that so that computers can now learn the context and apply the context when, when they are doing these natural language processing operations. Um, and if you think about expectations, where are the expectations, okay, what are expectations from, you know, we need to set right. So we have a project now, say, okay, we wanna do something with artificial intelligence, NLP, uh, but uh, it's a good idea to, to understand how far we can get with that, right? So there's an interesting book from Pedro Dominguez uh, talking about uh, uh, the master algorithm, uh, uh, and, and he, he classified three, three types of artificial intelligence. A weak one or, or a narrow one, which uh, is uh, focused on a certain you know, domain and have some, let's say, limited vocabulary. Uh, and th there's this general one, uh, Maybe uh, an example of, of that, uh, you know, uh, focus would, could be uh, Cisco collaboration uh, API. I don't know if you uh, visited uh, uh, the session from, uh, oh, I forgot the name. But uh, uh, th there was a session about language that you use to command to WebEx and, you know, uh, to those, those rooms. This is a narrow thing, right? So it's concentrated to something. Uh, more general one is, uh, you know, we're trying to attempt to have that in, 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 in Google, in, in Alexa, in, in Siri, in, in, in those machines that can, you know, expecting to receive anything and to give a meaningful answer to any question, right? So this is that general one. And the super intelligence one was to be considered that will be much smarter than any human brain. Uh, uh, will have a self-awareness and, and, you know, so I. I was uh, struggling to find a, an example of, that will fit into that, but uh, uh, across my mind, you know, the, 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 the uh, uh, a simple, actually, applications could be made to discover fake, fake money. It could be on a mobile phone. That's smarter than any man, you know, the most man, right? So, so because you can watch the, uh, you cannot see whether it's fake or not, but your phone can make a picture and say, hey, that's wrong give it back. <laughs> so, so that is already something that is superhuman, okay, but it's not general, right? Uh, so, but where the expectations are when, when it comes to contact center? Uh, so, it's somewhere between uh, narrow and general. We need to have some general knowledge for the things that we have open conversation about anything, but we also have to be narrow about subject of the business. So some, this comes to a, a very important topic of combining different sources of artificial intelligence. Maybe you will use Google for general one, maybe you will build in-house a narrow one. You, you can connect those models, I, I didn't tell uh, before. As input on one model could be another model. You can tie those models together. You can have pre-trained model and then attach it to your model and then train it again, right? So, so for example, if you have a model that recognizes a human, you know, human as an as a object in space, you can use that model that's already recognizing humans, but then you apply your own database that would recognize employees of your company, right? So that way you don't have to do all lots of training and discovery how you would recognize human, you only concentrate that it actually learns the picture of, of your employees, so when they show up on the door, the door's open, right? Uh, then, uh, okay, brands will reach uh, consumers on a personal level and will be able actually to listen uh, better to customers. And will be able to be always on, because always on would be better than always perfect. So in today's world, customers it's more important that, uh, that the service is accessible than that it is perfect, right? So if I have to wait till Monday morning to get the perfect service and I need it now, uh, I'm okay to, to have some uh, NLP talking to me. Uh, so topic modeling, 
uh, it's, it's actually data mining, text mining technique, right? So you get a bunch of text and you apply topic modeling, you get out of that, it tells you, okay, this is what this text is about, right? So those are some, there's assumption that those are some hidden or latent uh, uh, variables, those are built into the text and that you need to discover them, right? So uh, another uh, way to say that is, you know, to cover a hidden structure of collection of, of the text. So, so basically, uh, it's very powerful uh, in a way that, that uh, it's not something that, that we uh, typically think, right? So, so in, in, in the whole communication that happened in the contact centers, we, we set the borders up front. We said, okay, we have a service, sale, this is what we do, this is what we serve. But we never really looked what is actually happening in those conversations if it didn't apply topic modeling. We didn't even, you know, review, okay, what is all about? Where are these majority of conversations going on? Maybe there's some topics that we are not covering with our business enough, right? Maybe there's a topics that we can automate, maybe we can uh, improve. So it's important to discover and to understand those topics. That's why the topic modeling is the first thing to do. If you're thinking about applying artificial intelligence, uh, you know, start for topic modeling. And yes, we, we heard many times uh, they, they say uh, uh, data is a new oil, right? And uh, but there is another uh, twist on that, that, that data is a new soil. And when you put a key seed into that soil topic modeling, you get AI to grow out of data. So I don't know how, how good uh, is, is the paradigm. Uh, it's different from the rule-based, you know, text mining approaches from before for analyzing texts. Uh, and uh, it is unsupervised learning process, basically. Uh, it's much more powerful than, than recognizing text by just looking on the certain keywords or certain sentences. Uh, this uh, uh, does learning about uh, uh, many combinations and there's a, there's a problem with that. The topic comes out about something and the topic is just a collection of words, right? Uh, topic is just collection of words with some uh, probabilities attached to this words. Uh, there's a human action there that needs to happen. We need to name the topic. If we, if we are going to, you know, finish this process, computer will give us, hey, this is a topic number zero, and here's a list of 30 words that with those uh, probabilities I keep in my uh, list for this topic. Right? But you need to sort of name this topic, okay, that's a health care or this is a travel, or this is a business. Uh, so the so whole idea was built on this assumption that, okay, there is a, some hidden topics there, and yes, the goal is to discover them, right? Uh, so uh, what is this good for particularly, right? So one of the things that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, code, uh, chat based guys, I think they are acquired by Google, they are champions of building uh, uh, chatbots uh, uh, with, with data flow. They start, they say, okay, we start every project with, data, uh, with the topic modeling. No more brainstorm, how we build a chatbot, okay, let's do a brainstorm. Let's everyone think, uh, put his idea what should be covered. No? no, you do first topic modeling. Topic modeling tells you what needs to be covered, right? So, so that's, uh, that's uh, one one, uh, you know, one use case uh, uh, that's, uh, that's so obvious. And, uh, and the other one was something that we were uh, experimenting for the purpose of, of this session and uh, uh, with, with uh, some help from, from colleagues and, and, and a partner company, uh, we sort of build a little bit of uh, software here and uh, we have quite enough time to go through details. Um, so uh, this would be just, uh, you know, email routing, uh, you know, based on the topic modeling, right? Uh, we'll, we'll get to that a few, few, uh, few things uh, before we get to each of component of this uh, uh, little project, uh, um, just to just to make an introduction. Uh, there are different topic modeling algorithms, right? So, and uh, uh, this latent Dirichlet algorithm uh, 
uh, allocation, later, later, uh, late, latent Dirichlet allocation is the most popular one, a classic one, one that uses machine learning, uh, one that uh, uh, it has a built-in prevention of overfitting and some other things. Uh, this uh, Dirichlet thing is actually, uh, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a set of values for probabilities uh, for, for, the, for the document. So, so meaning that uh, uh, I can have 100% uh, one topic, or I can have two topics, one 30%, one 70%, or I can have three topics, 30, 30, 40, or I can have five topics, each of them 20%. Things like that. So, so that structure, you know, that that uh, sum all the probabilities up to one, uh, it's called Dirichlet, right? So, so this Dirichlet allocation in so meaning that you have multiple solutions for this problem. Uh, basically, uh, you can depending how many how many of those topics you're looking for, you always have to tell your algorithm, hey, uh, I'm looking for this number of topics. A model will try to find this number of topics. I will give you. Uh, give you some, some results back that you can say, okay, this is a good model or not. So we'll get to that uh, quickly. So we used several components in, in, in this. And those are all uh, basically Python libraries. You know, if you, if you see some name on the top of the slide here, now that's a Python library that we used. One is, uh, you know, part of, uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was a PhD work of, of Radim, uh, uh, Richerzek. Um, um, so uh, he actually uh, implemented quite a few uh, topic modeling algorithms on one place, uh, uh, make it uh, uh, quite popular. Uh, uh, they, uh, they now have a company, uh, Rare Technologies, that has more than 800 customers, uh, you know, using these libraries. Uh, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good entry point, I would say. You know, it's, a, it's a lots of things built on one place, uh, good things to start. Uh, and, and you also, you may get some commercial support for that. So uh, then uh, we also used uh, NLTK, which is a you know, classic library for, for uh, uh, NLP uh, utilities. You know, the, there's a lots of uh, things uh, that, that can do for us. You can remove stop words. It uh, also comes with the tons of material that was like a classic uh, uh, classic library that was first invented. Uh, there's a lots of useful utilities. Uh, uh, but then there are some other tools that, that we also have to be aware of if you are going to. Uh, this SPI C one was meant to be a production ready NLP library, which NLTK was more like a research, not optimized for perform performances. Uh, these guys uh, claim that, you know, they. Uh, they, they optimize what they do. I use it here for to extract a certain kind of words out of text. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, they support 34 uh, plus languages. Uh, so uh, there's a link here. And maybe a, another a framework for, for building a, a conversational API that also comes with uh, uh, with uh, uh, also comes with uh, with the NLP tools. Uh, this uh, Deep Pavlov. Uh, I see you making pictures. The presentation is already loaded in in the, in the uh, app, uh, and it's already all slides are already in a Spark room available, and all source code is available, accessible. So all links are there. So uh, uh, don't worry. So <laughs> uh, I also use this visualization component that can that can uh, tell me about the topic, uh, what words are used in the topic and how topic is positioned. So uh, uh, you'll see it in action in a minute. Uh, so a few others, you know, if you're considering now, okay, well maybe I got you warmed up to do some topic modeling. You don't need to go and use uh, again sim. You can use some other things. Uh, this is a piece of uh, Russian technology, uh, I would say, uh, 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 very serious one. It's ten times faster than GenSim and <laughs> has some uh, 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 very very good uh, performances. Uh, worth definitely checking. Uh, there are other suppliers of, of technology. In, in in the same examples that I was doing, just applying Mallet was able to 
do 10% better performance, but you know, I, I didn't leave it just so we are not uh, uh, get too complicated in our code. Uh, but uh, it, it was giving good results, I tried it. Um, there's also Stanford is providing uh, this uh, uh, topic modeling toolbox, uh, Columbia University guys as well. So, you know, it's up to you, right? So if you, if you, if you wanna explore that, you, you have some starting point, you, uh, if you wanna explore it further, go ahead. You know, if you wanna delegate it to Google and never do anything like that, you can do that as well. So, uh, we look uh, at the little projects uh, that, that we have. We, uh, we needed some raw email data. We wanted to process it to make topic model. So that, that, was, that was the goal. Okay, let's, let's build something that can uh, be utilized to routing emails. Okay, so, but then the first thing, the problem, okay, what we do, where we find raw email data, you know, if you knock on the door of your IT, they will just laugh on you, you know. <laughs> you, you can use your own email box, you know, to do some stuff, but, you know, they, that way you don't get uh, much. Uh, so first problem that any, one entering these spaces, okay, where we find data that we can play, right? So there are some sources, you know, that are built for, for people to play, and, and, and NLTK particularly uh, comes with ton of uh, pre-process, uh, 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 these uh, data corpuses that basically you can, you can use, and uh, some of those are quite interesting, you know, uh, uh, while this uh, Gutenberg project uh, then uh, this web text uh, uh, was sort of an uh, interesting one. It has these dialogues from the Firefox uh, support community. Uh, uh, the brown uh, was one, was uh, probably the most general one. There's some news, uh, news with, with a ton of records there. So you basically you install this library, you can load this data model, and guess what? It's available for you to play, to do whatever. But we were looking for something, okay, what is the contact center? Right, we needed something that can resemble you know, we're searching for something that's sort of applicable, logical for contact center, right? Uh, well, uh, there were other uh, uh, data sources there. Cornell, for example, have these uh, transcripts of movies, right? So, so there you get dialogues, right? So maybe that could be, you know, utilized to, to model some dialogues. And uh, uh, there, were, there were also some, you know, uh, uh, dialogue task-oriented uh, stuff. Microsoft published something, uh, some feature logs. Um, but none of those was really some, I would say, enterprise email uh, stuff. And, and then, you know, I ran into this uh, Enron uh, uh, data set. So basically, you remember the big uh, uh, affair with, uh, with Enron uh, uh, so stealing money from, from uh, uh, thousands and thousands of people. Uh, and, you know, as part of the, you know, uh, court proceedings over there, that are part of a punishment and, and all other stuff, all emails from 158 employees were released to public. And, you know, you go on the web and, you know, you get uh, 600,000 emails from their email boxes when they were seized. Um, and. Um, yeah, so, so does the real emails happen in a real enterprise, uh, okay, uh, maybe a while ago, but uh, still you have some something that, uh, you know, but then, you know, when I started looking into that, there was, uh, there was a ton of things, uh, we'll, we'll get to that point. So I guess uh, in the very next slide, yeah, we'll talking about this, yeah? So if we needed to filter this data, right? So this data was just, you know, was, was a bunch of things over there. And uh, so I needed to, uh, to say, okay, how can, I, um, how can I extract what I need, right? So the first start of this data is, is given in, in, in the directories and then folders and then files, you know? So the first thing, uh, uh, you, you need to import that into some data frame, you know? So then you need to separate, you know, things uh, into each column have, you know, so that you can access to and from addresses and content of the email. And depending on the analysis you wanna make, maybe you wanna take care of the, of the date or, 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 or things like that. So, uh, yeah, we, we did uh, you know, all these uh, uh, things in, uh, in, uh, in uh, and then we needed to remove garbage, right? So, so there, was, um, there was some uh, 
there were some emails simply that you know were not you know meant and, and, and cannot be imagined in a contact center scenario. Then we needed to say, okay, the contact center scenario means that email coming from outside and hitting someone inside, right? But also that that one from inside needs to reply to that email. So so then we cut those emails. Uh, we uh, go down from, from uh, 600,000, we go down to some 11,000 something emails. That, that those are, from those logics, you know, something that might be contact center email. Although this was not Enron contact center, those emails are coming from outside and being replied, right? So um, how that look like, let's quickly look. And uh, we have a we have a time to look over. Okay. So basically, you will you will receive. Um, mm -hmm. All those uh, you know libraries that we were talking about in in the slides. What we use are you know, at the, at the top of the file, you know, when we, when we use them. And then by the numbers on, on the slides that we presented, what was, what was done, you know, we have in this uh, 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 Jupyter notebook, we have, uh, you know, each operation one by one, what we were doing. So uh, you can follow on that if you're interested, you know, later on, we're not gonna stick. If there's some particular questions, we can, we can definitely get into, into that. But uh, uh, basically, that's uh, the numbers that in, in, in source code that you'll get, you will get each of those sort of section done in a code. So maybe useful for you if you are doing your own data filtering, maybe you can see how it was done here and then you apply some stuff that's, uh, that's up to you, right? So, but the, the, the most important thing is was to finally, you know, we get the uh, uh, train and test data uh, when we, uh, And this is, uh, for example, uh, uh, how we uh, uh, removed garbage, you know, from all different kind of uh, emails. You know, we needed to, you know, it's, it's a kind of manual process, you know, so. Um, um, but uh, the important point was um, here, basically, when we, when we got some uh, train data, basically, uh, in, in the, this data set, Basically, we decided, okay, let's take 95% of this data for training and let's leave 5% for testing, right? So this is, this is where we got separation from uh, 11,000 something emails to train and 582 emails for test, which is important because we'll use these 582 later on and some of those will show. Uh, and then uh, we were to, you know, to build, you know, model, right? So, um, and in the building a model, we, we have a few things to do. We need to clean the text uh, from all kind of, you know, uh, other things that uh, once we finally got emails that we wanted, we got the content of those emails, but it can have a bunch of crappy, characters in new lines, uh, uh, you, you name it. Then it have to be cleaned, have to be tokenized so that we uh, take, uh, take words, you know, specifically. Uh, then uh, we create big grams and three grams and, you know, you can create uh, 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 tetragrams and pentagrams if you want. Those are group of words that comes together. University of San Francisco, let's say it's a, it's a three gram. University of San Francisco, right? So if it's, if it's uh, happened quite often together, then it's taken, oh, that's one word, one token. Although it's a three words, I'm actually considering it's a one token. This is this uh, making big grams and three grams things, right? Uh, then uh, uh, lamentization was allowed, and this is where we use this PyC uh, library to only filter nouns, objectives, uh, adjectives, the verbs, and adverbs uh, uh, out, of, out of the text, right? So uh, we wanted to strip all other uh, language 
uh, uh, out of it, you know. And then I apply this uh, removing the stop words. Stop words are just those words happening every, any sentence, it has them. So they're, they're not bringing any value, they're bringing only noise and you can safely remove them. But the important thing, you, you need to remove stop words only after you de do these uh, big grams and three grams, right? Because if, let's say, off is a stop word and you remove it, then you lose the university off San Francisco uh, sort of structure. You'll never get connected in that, uh, you know, okay, Bellevue University is San Francisco, but those are still separate tokens. You know, off is a link point between them. So uh, try different ways. It's, it's, there's no rules here, basically. It's up to you how you do it, how you build your model. This is the way I build it. And then once we have this, all these words processed, tokenized, cleaned, uh, then we create this directory in corpus with, with, with the, we put this data into, 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 into code and say, hey, create uh, a dictionary out of it. Find me all these different words that I'm actually doing. And now build this corpus for learning, which will be actually taking for each word ID of that word will build some structure and this will be ready for model training. Right? We can, uh, as time permits, we can go back in code and, and check and if you have any questions, uh, uh, the, the code is uh, over there. Uh, we create the model. Uh, well, the, the idea is we have to find, one of the things that we have to find is optimal number of topics in a model. And there is a measure of quality of model. Now, get to that. So that's why we actually, instead of just training one model, we need to build a loop that will tra uh, train the model for different number of topics. Uh, and then we see where we're actually getting the best result. We save it to the files. Uh, we can do some testing. And uh, I have uh, some slides on that. So, so one is about uh, optimal number of toppings, right? So there's uh, this Cochrane score uh, which could be described as something that how easily would be for human to interpret this topic, right? So if, if this is higher, the model is considered to be better. So uh, and just for the, you know, sake of, you know, uh, I didn't know it's going to turn up this way, but it happened to, we have a very nice low number of topics showed up as, as a maximum. Number five topics out of these 11,000 emails, system, uh, system was able to find really five topics. Those are, and, and to give the best result, if I try to make it with more topics or less, I, I'm not getting this, this good result. So it gives me idea, yeah, so, 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 so probably there was some things uh, 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 with the nature of the, of the content of those emails, right? So uh, then, you can, you, can, you can check more about this uh, evaluation of topics on, on the link. Uh, and the test results, then I run in a loop all these 582 uh, emails I supply to, to a server uh, to train, uh, to, 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 to give me the results, what, what I'm getting uh, in terms of uh, uh, top ranking uh, topic. Uh, uh, and I was captured these results because if I, out of some email, I get topics, list of topics, and one of the topics is coming up with a big probability, let's say 80%. So this is useful information. That means, okay, most likely I can route this email to these guys because they handle this topic. And if I get high score on the top, or, or, that means that uh, that document was recognized. In, in my mind, this is the, you know, measure of success. And guess what? Out of those emails, we got a uh, 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 medium result, 68% on the top ranking topic was, was the mean. And, and basically, more than 50%, uh, 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 more than three quarters, three quarters of the test cases came back with more than 50% confidence in the particular topic which is solid result without too much optimization of the model and looking into that. It's already, you know, uh, telling, okay, th this, this might be something, you know, can, we can use, right? And uh, 
and I was also wondering, okay, what about, there's a small emails, there's a big emails, what if I, uh, maybe bigger email, it's easier to recognize, right? So, uh, but then I checked this, uh, this correlation here, and I got a, a pretty low number. It should be close to one if I have correlation, but you know, this is far from one. So, so basically, there is no correlation between length of the email and uh, you know, the quality of, of, of uh, uh, topic number number one. So, um, so yeah, so, so this was, you know, first part of the project, building a model, right? Taking raw data, uh, uh, doing cleanup, uh, doing analysis, finding uh, optimal uh, number of topics, creating that model, and yes, save, save all files that I need uh, on, you know, save it. And then uh, we have this next component. Uh, and, and by the way, the previous component was, was uh, uh, built in, in, in Jupyter. This is, you know, for those who are maybe not familiar, is, is environment good for, for this kind of uh, uh, Python development when you have to repeat your code quite a few times to change it on the fly, to put some notes in between. Uh, and it's quite, uh, you know, uh, uh, popular among data scientists and then people who are actually m playing with the models, right? This is, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, the other thing was, was I built the REST uh, API with, with Flask, which is, which is Python uh, web framework. It's, a, it's another library for Python that actually make, make, uh, make the web uh, functionality uh, uh, possible. Uh, you probably heard about Django. Django is big and includes a gazillion of things. The Flask is small. It does all, all that's necessary. Uh, it's, it, it's quite simple to build uh, REST services uh, using, uh, using uh, Flask and, uh, um, and it's Python. So meaning that, you know, I have every, all my uh, topic modeling libraries in Python and I have my web services in Python. So I think, you know, it's a, it's a good combination at least for, for, for proof of concept. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, so let's look what's done in, in this server. So first, we needed to do, we needed to build a data model for the server, right? And, uh, and we needed to say, okay, I have a model. Now, now model comes through file. I need to import it so that I can provide REST web services around. So first, I have model. I have a few things about the model. I need to know, for example, uh, Cochrane score, a name, a uh, uh, number of topics, uh, um, so, so this is my model, and and then I, okay, want to look, okay, what the topics of that model that were discovered, and then I have, you know, different topics, right? So that I have number, uh, topic has a number, and uh, um, uh, I also assign this uh, uh, alias and action as additional fields that we feel because we will need that to connect to contact center, because topic comes with the number that means nothing to me. I need to say that this, uh, I need to attribute this with some alias or action so that I give instructions to contact center what to do if this topics comes back as a result, right? Um, topics has words and inference is basically a test. Uh, inference of the model is actually use of the model. So each time I ask model, what is this email come back? Uh, give me topics of these emails. I create one new inference inference model, right? So inference object in the database, like basically. And I remember this text is a text of email, right, that I'm getting. And it comes back, it tells me, okay, you have this distribution of topics on this model. So, so basically, simple as that, right? So, so this, when I import model initially, I'll get model topic words, and that's, that's initially stuff. But when I use it, I actually build this inference it's important stuff, I, I, I keep this text in because later on you can use this text to further relearn the model and, and make this continuous learning of the model and things like that. And if you figure that out, you already have a startup on uh, IE probably. So, so there's a few things here to, 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 to be done, to, to be, uh, you know, completely, but we can talk. If anyone is doing anything similar, I, I like to talk. So source code for the database setup. Let's see uh, if I can show that. You have a link and uh, let me see if, if that is activated for you. 
probably If you try to access the model, probably uh, the, the source was not available. Okay. You're not seeing what I'm doing, right? Hmm. All right, so I'm giving you access to You don't need to see this. <laughs> okay, we, we can we can definitely finish this. Uh, uh, you'll get uh, you'll get access to source. I'll do it. Uh, just don't wanna wait. Waste. Uh, I have a 15 minute warning. So uh, we basically. Uh, Come back. So you will have working links to to a database setup procedure that builds this database, and then also uh, source code for this model loader. Once you have model files, you bring them and you load them in a database with this procedure. So those are you know two important things. And the uh, API itself look uh, like this. It will uh, give you you know. First one is to, okay, show me all models, uh, then uh, could be give me uh, more details about a particular model, and then there's uh, some post requests for this inference, and I, I, I made two, two, two flavors, one that is accepting text body in, in, a, in a post request, and the other that is accepting JSON, uh, depending what, what, what you prefer, and uh, for example, you wouldn't be able to, uh, to submit uh, JSON, JSONified text from directly from, from Postman, for example. Uh, uh, so, uh, and then you can delete your inferences if you made them, so that's the, the only delete here. Uh, so those are basically, you know, you, you only need one to, to make an inference, but the other ones are there to, so that you have parameters available if, if you need to have them. Uh, so, uh, if you if you run this uh, software from uh, you'll get this uh, web page right so it's even you know clickable so so uh, basically those, those gets you can get on click you see we have loaded two models here um, uh, this is a uh, details about the model number one okay so it cannot be seen but you can play with that it's 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 a publicly available IP address what is uh, uh, worth showing here is uh, is this uh, uh, <coughs> this page, which actually let us have a, uh, a closer look into into the model, and we are looking the model number two because that's the one that we use, right? So, <coughs> so this is the component I was mentioning. Uh, Pi while the AVs uh, was able to actually squeeze it into page, and over here we have a form that will take topics that we got out of model and we can assign this alias and action to each topic, right? So in this particular case, we were looking into, into topic, topic by topic and trying to analyze what they are, right? So for example, if you if look at this, uh, this topic here, uh, we see that uh, uh, we see some words showing up on this topic and uh, we can, we can go uh, over certain words there. For example, you know, um, if we say, um, okay, night, weekend, uh, Friday, we see that this is big, uh, hope, um, so basically it says that, you know, this this my uh, love, okay, you know, so looks like you know this is really a, a private, private email, right? So so those things you wouldn't be you know 
having in, in, in some, you know, and we see that it's much prevailing in this topic. So this, this scrolling down through this tool and seeing by some words which is topic actually is giving us best result is actually can help us uh, classify these topics and, and, and give the name of the topic. So some other topics, for example, uh, let's say uh, this one was uh, number three. Uh, if you look number three, uh, uh, and there are some words over there, uh, like, uh, okay, contract uh, and uh, Then uh, let's see. Well, okay, confidential. Uh, we see that you know some some legal terms, uh, uh, you know, coming in, in 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 you know when we have this. So, so we considered okay, this must be uh, some legal content, right? So we named uh, topic number three. We name it legal here, and we say okay, let's make it go to the email legal queue, right? So so. Basically, that's how we, that's the piece of work we need to do once we get the model. We have to analyze this. And one thing that talks about quality of models as well is that we see that those circles are separated. You know, so, so then there's no overlap between them. So which, you know, gives me another uh, feeling that, you know, this is a solid model. If he uh, would have some overlaps against that, 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 that may be a signal that we, we should do something different. Uh, so, and then that was that was that part, and then yeah. So we have to switch. Uh, yeah. So we had this data. We imported data into into uh, REST Web Service. Uh, web service. He was able to publish and to 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 provide access to to a model. And now let's see, you know, that in action. How how would that work with with the, with the upstream works in, uh, you know, in the, in the email desktop, right? Um, so, so basically, what they did um, in in their architecture, uh, they have a you know they have a flexible architecture and they were able to actually to do this without any major effort. Uh, they have some concierge manager that was routing their emails. They just made a small custom one that is connecting uh, to REST service. And uh, you know, uh, able to to get uh, uh, to emails. So uh, how it looks in the interface? Uh, this is a queue uh, showing up, and the emails that uh, you, you you remember I, I I mentioned 582, and uh, when I say test 190, that's an email 190, right? It's out of these tests, and we see that they were classified some of them as email communication, email private, email private, email legal. And uh, if you are to scroll into, into in the deep, deep dive into some of those emails, let's say the legal one came back with this and I don't know if you can uh, uh, read it, was the, what was the full legal name of Aaron uh, Petrochemicals, you know? And there was some, some, some email about that was, was, was clearly um, with, with, with some legal subject or there was, uh, I have a tire bump. I could take it to a, uh, a bike show, bike, bike sport, and I have new ones, but you know, clearly a private, right? So, so we can now play and test uh, the, the rest of the time we do in, in, in the real, um, so that uh, we can we can maybe uh, you know take a few shots here from if you wanna test some of the emails. Um, So uh, this is the uh, this is the the, the all loaded queue. Let me clean the queue. Uh, we don't need it. Uh, come on. Okay. And over here now we should see uh, empty queue, right? So what we have, you know, we have this way to submit emails into, into this cumulus and on um, somewhere here I have, okay, let's see. 
children. Yes. It's somewhere here I have this 500 something. So pick the number, okay. So what number you want to, we, we, we to try? 200? 12, 212, okay. So email number 212, it says this text, right? So the wins was really disappointed when I did not hear from Lee Farrell after interviewed me back in May. Uh, okay, so I don't know if it's a business or not, but we'll ask the system, tell us please, what is this email all about? That will be test 100, 2012 and That's the basically email that that we loaded and we send it over. We see that it's successfully sent and we go back um, in S and wait a few seconds till it's processed on upstream works. And if he well it says email energy trade. So who knows? Uh, we can uh, we can now further explore this email and see whether there is a, some uh, energy trade in this one or, or some context on that. So, but this was, um, it was a big, big chunk of them. So, well, maybe not 100% uh, clear. We had to read email really to see whether or not, but uh, we got over 50% of confidence because if, if the system will not give back more than 50%, it will be routed to do default. Say, okay, I'm not confident enough. I will just say to, straight to email queue, right? This one uh, says, okay, I'm more than, more than that. So, okay, it was, uh, you know, it's a real email. Uh, that's, uh, uh, if, if uh, you, you have access to, to this, you can test it yourself. Whether, you know, to what extent this, this is useful directly uh, depends basically how you would model your own emails. Uh, where you start probably is, is good ideas to start from your own help desk because this is the data you can, you can get probably most easily uh, and then, then use them, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in experiments. But uh, for the time being, if you need to provide some, some value, you can use some of this data or uh, some of the things that I mentioned. Uh, so again, you know, I will remind to uh, what uh, uh, Tracy was, was saying on the conference uh, about topic modeling, it's probably uh, worth, I hope I, I made you uh, think about this as, as possible first step. And also I hope that, uh, you know, all the code uh, that's provided to you uh, may be a little bridge to possible if you want to start playing with that or eventually uh, someone start maybe uh, make it part of, extend a part of your products or offerings or services. I'm more than happy to stay in touch uh, uh, First of all, I'm easily discoverable on LinkedIn uh, uh, as, a, as a pretty unique name and last name. So uh, no trouble finding me there. Happy to uh, connect. Uh, also, uh, we have this uh, chat room. The presentation is already dropped in a chat room. You already have it in your application, but I don't know if you can ec extract it from the application. From chat, chat room, you can get it. It's already there. Uh, I, will, I will fix the, the, the code accessibility as, as, uh, as we finish right away. So get uh, access to source code and uh, feel free to use it any way you want and please stay in touch and tell me if you are doing something with this and uh, if you think it, you wanna see a little bit more of this and you, you make sure you give a good marks because otherwise there will be no, no continue session. Okay, thank you very much.